Hello, anyone who happens to be watching this, welcome to what is now the first video in my film and media series. So I've covered a couple videos. I've talked about, um, I've covered a noir by Orson Welles at this point. I've also talked about the disaster artist. Uh, but today I wanted to, to step into a, the world of a video game. All of this work is to influence how I think out the book I am writing, Circles. The Myth of Society, which is a sociological take on uh, Campbellian and Jungian themes and how societies develop and how they can be used by individuals in the helping profession to understand and engage with various groups. Today, I want to talk about Borderlands, which is, in my opinion, one of the best video games I've ever played. Right? The entire series is very interesting. The entire series is this mix of RPG elements with first-person shooters with a very engaging and interesting Mad Max type world. And so there's a lot of different elements that go into that, but I wanna talk about the philosophy behind Borderlands to help me think that through. And so Borderlands, what makes it really interesting is it is very Rousseauian. So for those who are not familiar, Jean-Jacques Rousseau was a philosopher that really took a, an interesting take on the humans, right? So at, at, kind of at his time, everyone was debating his social contracts and how humans interact in nature. You know, we have really two main ideas at this point, which is John Locke. And John Locke argues that humans in the state of nature are, are basically good, right? Nature, we develop basic laws, we develop basic fundamental truths. Um, there's these ideas of, of liberty and pursuit of happiness that he argues for. And you have Hobbes, who basically is humans are fucked, right? I mean, Hobbes, but, but I mean, to be fair, Hobbes came a time where, like, you know, there's a hundred year old war and people are using human heads for games and, and, and believed and talked about his work with Leviathan that, that humanity is basically this dark, destructive source. Rousseau takes this interesting take, right? What Locke and Hobbes were both talking about is the necessity of society to progress based values of humanity. What Rousseau suggests is that actually society is the corrupting force and in reality, humans are better in a state of nature. And returning away from civilization will return us to this positive state that society itself is corrosive and corruptive, that is disruptive. Rousseau, to me, is the perpetual bullied kid in high school that just goes, this fucking system, man, if I can escape it, which I relate to 130%. High school was not a easy experience for me. But regardless, Borderlands takes a very interesting take on this because what Borderlands, the video game series, is looking at is the separation from society as we technologically advance. And most sci-fi takes a very different approach. For the most part, science fiction suggests as we technologically progress, so will we morally. This is, the, it, this is the premise of Star Trek, right? As we develop technologically, we, so, so do we ethically and morally and philosophically, we become more advanced, we become more connected as people, we're able to explore the universe with this set of moral and ethical principles, which are perhaps too far and Kirk pushes that. Star Wars takes it a little bit differently, but at the same time, it, it shows a progressive dichotomy in between good and evil or in chaos and a futuristic system. Borderlands is a return to nature, right? So humans return to a primitive pre-societal state as technology develops. But what Borderlands suggests is this is a step into madness. That as we reach to the stars, we can develop the technology to engage with new systems, we lose our minds. And this is seen across the world, right? It's the, the, the game is fascinated with forms of madness. Craig and Borderlands 2 is one of my favorite characters, right? We get to play the psychopath killer who, who is trying to battle the demons within himself. But it shows this, this, this distinction between ethics and technology that I think is really, really important. 
and it shows this important aspect of the abyss, which is an idea I brought up in my book series, or my book that I'm working on quite a bit, which is the idea of the abyss. And the abyss is the void, it's the emptiness of reality, it's the step beyond for the human perceptual understanding, it is the embodiment of the abstract. It is the realm of Plato's forms. And in Borderlands, this is, this is a realm that is occupied by a futuristic alien species that have created the vaults to harness it and keep it locked away. And in the games, we're trying to open it because we want loot. Because of course, we're humans, right? We want, we want neat shit. And so as we open this, we unleash monsters. And you can see this throughout the game series in terms of the philosophy of the developers because they use different themes to represent it. In Borderlands 3, we see the expansion that's very Lovecraftian, and Lovecraft is the epitome of cosmic nihilism, this idea that the, that, that the universe is not a happy place. As we go out further, we will only find monsters that are bigger and badder than we are. We see this in, in the pre-sequel, where we have an expansion that is engaging into Claptrap's mind and is a type of cyberpunk sci-fi where we're engaging in a twisted reality that is more broken than it is fixed as it starts to dissipate. We see that in Borderlands 2 as we engage in realms of D&D and we try to, you know, we, we, we see these different realms that are philosophical representations of a breakdown of madness. And I think one of the characters that's actually interesting the most in this is Bond. If you actually are one of the few people like me who played the Telltale series, which was, you know, I'm so pissed I actually paid for the Telltale series. And it was after they lost all their money and their stuff broke, so I couldn't actually play later chapters. I only had to play like two or three of them. This is what I had downloaded. But Vaughn is this character who is this chubby, isolated accountant. He's insecure. He is uncomfortable with madness. He wants to stay with his company and be safe. He, you know, he enjoys where he is with his numbers and his mathematics, but he is thrust in this own node that is Pandora. And when we see him again in Borderlands 3, Bon has become a pretty badass dude, right? He's running around with an eight pack and he is fighting bandits and he's helping being a prime. He's our prime go to man as we engage in Pandora in Borderlands 3. And I'm left with this question which Vaughn was better off? The Vaughn that was a slave to the corporate system and his security and constant anxiety hyper rational and in, in line with order or the fallen that has become a a rebellious maddened beast who is utterly and completely free from social constraints to do as his whims suggest right i mean that's a very important three he's trying to develop a relationship with a crazy game show host, which he helps you, you know, he has you help him hack the system so he can show his abs on the screen and she can suggest a date with him. But he has gone completely insane. Is he better? Or is he worse? And I think through Vaughn, we can see a very interesting question when it comes to Rousseau. Because if we accept Rousseau's theory that man is better in nature, then that also means that rationality itself is not necessarily a good thing that a more primitive bestial instinct is actually better. We are corrupted by being forced to live in civilization. I mean, and this is a constant debate, right? I live in a rural community. We're not necessarily interested in moving to New York and being big city folk. And being civilized with your trains and rooms and suits, blah, 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 and nine to fives, and we'd rather sell the patio and drink whiskey. And so this also fits in some idea of can't move that I've been talking a lot about recently of this absurd distinction, the separation between reality and the abstract truth. 
And so I think Borderlands plays with this idea in a very chaotic and interesting way. And we're forced to look at that. We're forced to ask ourselves, what does this mean? And what I think is really interesting about the game's progression is, you know, the second game is very fitness time, but I want to talk about the third one. And Borderlands 3 is asking, in a digital age, what does this mean? What is this new frontier of madness? Have we created a new natural environment to retreat to? What is the absurdity and madness of Twitter and dubstep? Of Reddit and hacking, of anonymous. What is this world? And this is what we're constantly playing with. Right? We see our main villains not necessarily trying to destroy you, but they're thrilled that you kill their followers because they get more likes. A shift in currency, where the currency has changed from from dollars and power and land to an internet reality. Clips of trends are fascinating in this regard. They're masters of it. So this is a series I would probably return to and talk about. I played Borderlands 2 like four times. Pretty sequel three. The first one, a couple. I'm, I'm actually, I actually haven't finished Borderlands 3 yet because I have a child now, which makes my life significantly more difficult. Yeah, I think Reese is an interesting character too. Right? He's somebody that's seeking redemption and to make his career and finds his own way developing the company of animals. And so in his way, he rejects Russo and he rejects Hans. I think in a certain regard. So I don't know. This is what I'd like to talk about more. It's just something I'm playing with and toying with. If you have any thoughts about Borderlands, and if anybody ever sees this, please go ahead and make a comment. Talk about the philosophy that you've noted in, in these games. I'd love to talk about it. I'd love to get some other opinions. I'd love to chew on it. I'd love to have a discussion and make another video. I plan to talk about film and media every Thursday. So please come back and check it out. Uh, like I said, I'm writing a book on sociological theory that's based on my thesis. It's called Circle Theory, the Myth of Society. On Fridays, I talk about how I've been going in terms of writing. You can check in and take a look at that. Uh, I have a bunch of other videos talking about stories and lit, theory and philosophy, and mythology and folklore. Please take a look at other videos and challenge. Make a like, share. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if anybody will ever see this, but I'm just trying to figure this stuff out. So I hope, I hope that this is as informative for you as it is for me. This is unscripted. This is just me thinking out loud why I have a drink on a random night. So this is me signing out.